Uh, oh. I love you both, Frank and Jeffrey. <laughs> yeah, thank Take you, Jeff. Away. Take it away. Thank you. Good to see you in the hills of Peru. Yeah, so uh, here we are in Camus, and we got Frank joining us from where I, I lose track. He's in Switzerland now. So, yeah, welcome, Frank. And as you can see, we're doing some playing around with different things here at the studio. And as you can see, Jeff's got Peru behind him. And so I have a, uh, a picture behind me that we were playing with the green screen and trying to get new things. And up until the show, I'm like, what am I gonna, what am I gonna show behind me? And then I'm like, oh, I'll walk outside and take a picture of the foundation. So yeah, behind me, you can see, hold on, let me have Nicholas phase me out. There it is, there's the foundation. So that's our studio that's coming up. You can see we got a couple of doorways and the floor is being poured next week. So, all right, you can phase me back in. And I'm back. All right, so we're <laughs> playing around with stuff. But uh, yeah, the studio's an exciting project. I loved, uh, I loved all the shows today. I, uh, yeah, loved seeing the studio down in, in Mexico. I was down there for quite some time and even I walked into the sanctuary and Andy was like, oh, what a great show to just to hear about what actually goes on behind the scenes and that we are, you know, what this is really about is awakening and that we're using it for forgiveness and it's through our relationships and of course we have to have these functions and right now, this is our function here in Camus is building a, uh, building a new studio and I have my studio team back there, Nicholas and, and Zach at work and yeah, it's been it's been quite a uh, quite a journey for me. Just even over the past year, from starting the studios in January, I think it started in Brazil, and then we came back and starting them there, and just seeing through the practice and what we use these relationships and functions for and projects to heal our minds and see where there's attachments to roles. You know, I started out as one thing and then director, producer, this, and it's like seeing where there's attachment. And I've had this amazing experience recently and it started, yeah, probably noticeably a couple, like maybe a month ago and it was on, we have these studio calls after our shows just to say, hey, we can fix this, we can do these things. And hey, what about these new shows? And us in Mexico just get together and, and share our ideas and. I noticed this complete, like, let go of any type of attachment to, there was no, yeah, there was, there was nothing there when people would say, oh, you need to do this, or frame the shots tighter, or whatever it was, it was like, okay, it was like this experience of seeing guidance coming through my brother and, and sister and saying, okay, and like actually lighting up to that and not taking any of it personally. And yeah, it was really, it was really cool. And then as a result, I'm actually stepping back more from the studio and, and Nicholas is, is stepping in to take a, a bigger role in the studio here. And this is his handiwork. I wasn't able to get to this stuff for months and now I show up and Nicholas has got the green screen going and all kinds of new stuff. And yeah, my practice right now is, you know, it's on our sign here in Camus at the Metaphysical Center, we have a painting out by the street. It says, let go, let God. And my practice right now is let go and let Nicholas so he can <laughs> take over the studio. He's smiling back there. But it's, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been amazing. And I'm actually maybe going to start a new show in the mornings because a lot of people have been asking about what I do in the morning with my morning practice. And I've shared from when this show started that, you know, I have three main things I do and it's setting the goal, which me and Frank have been talking about and he's been implementing in his life, you know, every day and responsibility for sight and rules for decision, you know, and it was great at the last retreat, you know, David, the big guy brought it up and and I loved it. And our next online retreat is actually called The New Beginning. And that was actually one of my ideas for the background. I'm like, let's take a picture of that page and put it up there. But as a result of actually doing that practice every morning, and me and Frank have been diving deeper into that, you know, recently with the stuff that's been going on with him. And, you know, those, those pages talk about this practice and, you know, each step, each time it's practiced, you know, these steps will be led from dreams of pain and fear to forgiving dreams. And that actually is the experience when we can recognize where we're actually making these decisions. And I loved what, you know, David said last week, it was, you know, that one question he goes, I'm going to give you the key. And this was based on the third, the third rule for decision. And, you know, it's that one, if you have read them over and over, it's, 
you know, I have no question, I forgot what to decide. This is a restorative for the mind because we make up, we make up our mind already. And I was sharing with Frank this past week, like, let's focus on where we can see that we're making these conclusions in every moment. Because a decision, it tells us in the Course, is a conclusion based on what we believe. So I actually was starting to look even more deeply at all the conclusions that my mind makes up about everything. And that's what it says in there, is even to step back from this, I will not be the judge of what to do. I will also not be the judge of the situations where I'm called on to make a response. So we were playing with that, me and Frank, and it was really cool because it's, it's amazing how overactive the mind is with trying to make these small conclusions and make up what it is we think is best for us. And, you know, Frank, on our last show, we had this, this prayer, really, you know, that he's been sharing with me. And, you know, Jeff shared at the beginning of the programming today that he had this prayer to become more involved. Like he's been in Peru and he's a part of our studio calls on Monday and he's now hosting and now he's taking over the touring for, you know, David, if you watch the online retreat, he's actually going on world tour to travel to homes and be the guest in homes, possibly to be live on shows or retreat weekends from wherever he visits. He's going to Portugal, as Frank knows, and South America, South Africa is in the works and all these other places. And yeah, Frank's prayer was, he had shared with me, some people that were here at our mystery school went home and were interested in having some, some kind of connection in Portugal. And Frank called me, he's like, I'm really feeling Portugal. I'm really feeling that connection. And sure enough, now <laughs> it's all culminating. And Frank has the answer to his prayer. David's flying to Portugal uh, next week with Lisa and yeah, exploring this, this answer to your prayer, Frank. And, you know, you've been joining with me on even, oh, wow, now it's coming and the thoughts that come up with it and practicing these rules, like where I'm making these conclusions in my mind and where it wants to take me off and then actually relying on a brother to, to be brought back. You know, it's, I read, you know, I usually, you know, do this every morning and last night I sat down and I'm like, hey, what's the show going to be about? And I'm praying and and Susanna came into the room, and I'm like, I think it's just going to be about rules for decision. I'm like, how can I have this show about the same thing every <laughs> every other week? And she's like, oh, that's beautiful. I'm like, okay. And I read through it, and, you know, I know it, like, by heart. But when I read it, the last two paragraphs, I actually started crying for the first time reading that that section. And because it talks about, you know, the truth that we actually don't make a decision ourselves ever. That's the fact. I mean, the first and second statements in the rules for decisions I will make no decisions myself today that's actually a fact it's just what teacher am I choosing and am I you know there, there was this line that I started to cry on it was like what kingdom of the world will you have today and it was like oh my god like this whole thing that I am I am choosing you know what what it is you know even Ken and Anna show talking about the desire when I put those first I play that section and I pause it you know, I actually have it on my phone and I play and when it says, think of the day you want, and I pause and I actually settle into what day do I want today? And then I hit play and it says, what feelings would you experience? And I pause it again and I, I have a list on my phone that I go through and I say, which one's resonating with me today? Is it contentment? Is it gratitude? Whatever it is, I, I settle into that place and then what would I have happen to me? Literally during the day, I want to do this with Nicholas or I actually get specifics when the specific desires are there. And then what would I have? What would I experience? And when I can do that and stay in that place, and then it says, and the second rule, when you have time, when there's a moment, you can pause and do this. Well, as I practice this more, those moments become more frequent and more frequent, and that's the miracle mind where I can stay in this place where I'm always choosing the way I feel. I'm always choosing what's happening. And then when I'm not, something comes up, and I have to question the beliefs. I have to look at it. But this is the practice I've been doing. I've been sharing with Frank, and he's been able to. Maybe he can share a little about his uh, recent his recent updates and how it's going there in Switzerland. But it's really good to good, good to see you, Frank. Yeah, good to see you. Uh, I, uh, you know, the, the, that that uh, uh, the rules for decision is. It was interesting how last week because we have been working a lot on it and and you know talking about it, and I've been practicing, and then the, the question came up. Uh, you know, and, and David answered it really beautifully, and now it's on Spreaker. Um, but you know, I, I'm realizing so 
strongly now that the decision is a conclusion, you know, and it's based of my, on what I believe. And the whole practice is let go of the belief, let go of the belief. And, you know, now, well, this the whole thing that's, that, uh, it, that's happening now that Lisa and David are coming. And it was last weekend, I was thinking, you know, what I was praying, my prayers, what do you want me to do? And, you know, some mighty companions have been coming in and calling me, you know, also new ones. And it was trickling in, but I thought, okay, this is, it's happening, but it's happening very slow. And then all of a sudden, boom, the avalanche, you know, Lisa calls me after the show, after the, 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 the retreat and she said, I, I saw you and how are you doing? And I said, uh, you know, we started joining and then I, I said this thing about Portugal. And I think an hour and a half later, David, everybody was on the phone. Let's go. I'm coming in two days. Like, Ooh. <laughs> That's very intense, you know, because then, you know, the, pra- the prayer is answered and then the fear comes up and the fear is, oh my God, I'm, what do they want from me? You know, and um, also, uh, am I going to be able to deliver, you know, um, am I uh, going to disappoint them? Are they going to throw me away when they finally find out I'm a fraud? You know, all this stuff. When they finally figure you out. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because it comes up so quick and, you know, in our calls, it's like, as soon as that answer for the prayer, and that's why it happens, we talked about, you know, oh, it's happening so quick. And this is how Quantico happened, you know, when you had this desire down in Mexico, it was like, it was swift. And like, spirit acts the way we have to so that these doubts can't enter our mind or really take us over. And, you know, we have this collaboration to explore those thoughts. And it's funny, because as you explained it, like, oh, now this is coming in. And really, you know, what we're starting to touch on is the unworthiness that I'm actually not worthy of this love coming towards me that we we all face over and over until it's washed away. But yeah, that part of the rules for decision, it was like, because this was part of it for you too. It was like, okay, now, you know, this kind of house where I'm inspired because you wanted to keep your residence in, in Europe for different reasons. And then like specifics, all your preferences were coming up. And it was funny because I thought last weekend when David was talking about the rules for decisions, I'll give you the key. And it was in the third rule for the, I have no question. He said, of these preferences, which one do I prefer? And that's what it all comes down to. It's like, it all comes down to what I think's best. What do I prefer? Cause I see a difference when I'm seeing differences in the world. That's what happens. And then I make a conclusion based on what I think is best for me or what I think will make me happy. Then when I actually look deeper and see that the conclusion is based on false premise. It's like that's where the release comes. That's the stepping back from I have no question. I forgot what to decide because when we're seeing a premise that is based on differences, unless our premise is everything is the same, (laughs) that's the only premise that's going to get us to a state of happiness. So I know that came up with you with with different aspects of this. With the the preferences, with the the house, and and then, you know, I was sending them, you know, what I was thinking about, (laughs) and then they could send me pictures of total different things that I hadn't, you know, that wouldn't be in my preference. And I, I kept saying it and then they, you know, and it was almost like, yeah, but this and this is good. And I, I know they were actually having a good time with me because they know I'm so, I'm so into those, those preferences. And then, you know, suddenly is that let go. It's not about that. Mm. And, and it's so uh, uh, helpful to have, uh, you know, to work with you. Mm. To have you always, you know, re, refocus my mind and reset and reset and say, you know, oh, just stop, look, you know, look at it from another way, and then I have to say, you know, the book so well, you know, so you always send me to the right passages, you know, and I now my book is full of little things of all these passages, so I go through them, you know, I put these stickies in there, and and with these passages, I'm able to navigate you know to really keep my mind always coming back coming back and i can see how over the weeks it's getting better and it's getting more automatic but i had some uh, um some uh, contractions about these uh because uh, it looked like we have maybe a different um uh, a vision of of you know i i was th- thought more like of a bit of a uh rom- remote 
Muji type place, you know, and, mm -hmm. and it wasn't, uh, you know, the general idea. And so uh, it's exactly which of these, which of these illusions do you prefer? And I realize I have a lot of undoing also to do from, because I have a lot of <laughs> special preferences. Yeah, part of, the, uh, part of that, Frank, is this, what I was just speaking to earlier, it's like when I actually start coming into the experience that I can hear guidance through a brother or whatever it was, and I have this story that I always tell about Utah when we were in, in Mexico, and for some reason, I just heard so clearly that whatever she was saying was like was for me and there was resistances even to like certain it was Trello at first this program that we use for listing and I had this good memory so I could remember everything and then when I actually started listening to this stuff it was like I would have these you know higher vibration experiences and I would be like oh wow as a result of following what was my guidance but I wasn't really you know ready to do those things at the time and it was funny because even what you're saying is like all I do with you is, is point you to a passage. It's like, it's the same thing as recovery. It's like, if it's not in the book, I'm not going to give you my own opinion. Like, it's not about opinions. And it's like, I hear what is helpful for me and I share it with you. And it was like, there's this, le there's a, a line in one of the lessons, 66, I think it is. And it says, you'll either listen to the madness or hear the voice of truth. And it was like, this is back to the rules of precision. There's only, I'm going to make seemingly make a decision you know on these things but it's always just it's actually not even about the decision it's about who do i believe i'm making it with and that's all we practice is we never actually go with a coercion or say you have to do this or this it's just helping each other you know hear the spirit and when you know even certain things that you've gone through and saying well i want to do this or this and i hold the space and then it's this offering this willingness to to hear willingness to hear a voice that is not the, the egos and just by joining that's what those last two paragraphs I was saying it says it's it keeps saying where to where two are joined and it's like that's that's the whole thing you know this whole course is like where two or more are joined there I am and that's actually recovery too you know with sponsorship and all that it's like it needs but two to understand that they cannot decide alone to guarantee the joy they asked for and will be wholly shared it's like we know that in that that we're going to hear this and that's all that we practice is like you know coming to that place and do i want the problem or the answer it's like it says it's so many different ways in the course <laughs> it's like that's why i focus on those certain sections because it makes sense to me it's like i had this like that's what the what the uh the tears were about last night was the gratitude like even i had for the 12-step program i had so much gratitude that there was actually directions written in a book that I could actually refer to, that I didn't have to rely on my mind to, for any of it, and letting go of what I think to actually join with a brother and then have this, these clear instructions, you know, that actually says that in the 12-step book. If you have followed these directions, you will know a freedom, you know, and that's what has happened as a result of this, this process. Yeah. You know, for me, a lot of the process has, I mean, I always have, but I'm becoming more aware, it's really letting go of all the beliefs, because everything we said before, you know, the conclusions are, are, uh, are based on beliefs. Everything is belief, and, and I'm questioning every belief, you know. I'm really, you know, going to the edge of the cliff with the beliefs, you know, and I'm saying, okay, I'm questioning this, I'm questioning that, I'm questioning my... Uh, and, you know, last week I started um, uh, working with the horses again, and I, was, I had a few students, you know, to teach horsemanship, and I had so many, I have so many beliefs, you know, I was taught by this guy, Bob Brannaman, and it's like the worthy, you know, the, the worthy cause. And it says, you know, um, in that appointed friend, if you think there's a, if you find a cause worthy uh, and you think it's worth pursuing, it will hurt you, not because it has the power to do so, but because you forgot that it's an illusion. And so I'm there. You know, and I know all this stuff, and I'm good with the horses, and I know what I'm doing. And I watched yesterday the movie Doctor Strange, who was good with his hands, and he is, you know, uh, then he, he breaks his hands, and he can't do it anymore. And I had this hip problem, so I haven't been able to, you know, if I hadn't had the hip problem, I would have not joined with you guys. And But so now I'm again, you know, in, in an arena uh, um, helping people, and it was great because I could say, 
because you know the system i i learn and i teach is it's in the world it's the best way to deal with horses and even there i would say are you sure about this you know i'm willing to question even that mm. i'm willing to question yeah it's probably the best in the dream of the world but the horse is just a thought the thing it's all just thoughts yeah. so if they're thoughts i can give them up you know and now i'm 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 so i've done this twice last week and then i got this uh phone call and now i'm letting the horses go again and i'm going to portugal because yeah. it's like in the guy in the movie you know yes you're you're good at the hospital and all this but you need it elsewhere right now yeah and my mind is open enough to receive that and because i am willing to question all these beliefs you know and and that i think that's the major work is question it question it question it and 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 say i'm willing to be wrong about this you know god i'm willing to be wrong about this yeah and and that's and not even judging it it was like even when you you had called me and you asked me about that even you were like you're willing you're like well the sky wants me or woman wants me to train the horse or i don't even know what it is break the horse or i don't even know what it is you do with it <laughs> no, not break well you asked you're like and all I did was, you know, pray with you and like, well, what do you think? And like, what's most helpful? Because it's not actually about what you're doing either. You know, it's about the judgment on what you're doing, you know. And it was like, we actually together were reading the second paragraph of the goal of specialness. And the first line, it says, it's in the introduction. It says, to learn this course requires willingness to question every value that you hold. And this is the same paragraph that actually says a decision is a conclusion based on everything you believe. So it's even conclusions based on, oh, if I do the horses, this means something. You know, as long as I'm not placing the value on those things. And it was great because you had, you know, you needed a direction for your mind for those days. And you ultimately were like, oh, it feels pretty good. And you went there and you like, we actually had a call. You were, he was showing me all the horses. It was, it was really cool. <laughs> But it was, you know, even for this time, we never know what it is, even for me, stepping out of the studio, but actually to step into something of greater value to expand my mind. I'm actually in a higher communication function and actually joining with more people than I were, I, more than I was. And it wasn't what I wanted to do. I'm actually, my inspiration is to build that studio, to be involved with the builders and do all this and to put up the green screen. And I have so much inspiration around that, that I was trusting a brother when I was like well no I think you're to actually take this position on and be more involved in these types of things and when I, I did it I was like okay it was the same experience I had with Utah it was like trusting a brother and you know and this it was Jason that was just calling me to a more expansive mind and like I've had experiences even just joining I was joining you know Jason mentioned that I was called into that inside passage I had calls with Jackie and Suzanne and Calico, and it was beautiful. Like the first call I had with Calico, she was crying because I had so much inspiration around her inspiration. Like it was absolutely amazing. Like, and I saw the value in that whole thing. I don't want to get into, <laughs> into all that, but like what an amazing opportunity to, to do that kind of stuff online and then share and all that on a cruise. I was like, oh my God, my heart was, was exploding with the same thing. and. It was these type of things that I'm being called into, not based on what I think I would know. You know, I would say, oh no, my best value would be here doing this. And by doing those things, I'm actually robbing other people of their expansion. And it's a whole cycle of listening to spirit and being guided and having one another to to bounce those things off of and say, hey, how does this feel? And you know, and you got caught up in a bunch of stuff and it was like, Frank, it's not about any of that. And we just kept coming back to this. Let's not make any conclusion. Your only job here is to watch your mind and see where you want to make up your mind before actually there is anything that needs to be needs to be done. So, yeah, it was yeah. a real real honor to do that with you. And, and then and then you know, having done it now, you know, for for a while, I I can see that my mind is not wandering as much anymore. It wants to go to the place, but I can catch it so much quicker now. You know, it's, and that's where I see, uh, you know, all I have to do is do this. My mind heals. And then whatever I see, 
is, you know, I had uh, at the meeting, I just want to, I want to share this. I've been going to a lot of 12 step meetings and also I've been seeing, you know, the stuff I've been hearing at the meetings is great. And some real recovery and very, you know, very uh, inspired stuff. Yeah. And then I thought, oh, wow. Does this have to, you know, I really want to make it personal. So does this have to do something with something I said? Then suddenly, you know, I said, no, you're just experiencing a healed mind. Yeah. You know, these people pro are projecting your mind. And yeah. there's not, not so much moaning, you know, like sometimes we have at meetings. There wasn't any of that. People were talking about letting go absolutely this one guy was saying, I said, why you cornered the whole thing? He said, but if I let go, absolutely, who is going to protect me? I said, well, that's, you know, that is the most honest thing you could have said. So there's the trust, you know? So yeah. all the meetings have been, you know, have been on trust and people really going out on the limb. You know, people have been using those things a lot. Uh, I'm at the edge of the cliff. I'm, I'm ready to jump. I never hear this stuff, but this is my mind. So the whole room is is reflecting that, you know. That's it. That's it. It was back when you were when you were in the south of France and you were still attending some and you were going through a lot. Everybody was moaning and now you're at this other expansive point and everyone's yeah. reflecting that. And it's funny you just said that because I've been on a roll here with my fortune cookies and my last two speak exactly to what you say. You said, you know, talking about this this healed mind or you know this peace that comes into your mind and my fortune was a peaceful mind generates power. I love that one. And that's, you know, and that's great because even with recovery, we know it's the power. It's not of our own. It's just that we have this state of mind so that this can, and then my other one is, this might have something to do with your perception of the meetings recently. Alter ideas and you alter the world. So, so my fortunes have been pretty solid lately. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so you have uh, some exciting stuff coming up. <clears throat> yes. And, um, uh, and you know, there was also, uh, you know, the doubt thoughts were also manifesting because there is a, you know, that Florida storm was heading to us, to, to, straight to Portugal. And I woke up yesterday with, a, with a, an email from David, you know, and all the things. They, there is a, you're not hallucinating. There is a hurricane coming to Europe. And so yesterday we were talking about canceling the whole thing, you know, because we said we don't want to be stuck in a hurricane. And now the hurricane has, uh, has passed already. Yeah. So, That's you know, it's interesting life. how all this thing then, you know, all the doubt does, and suddenly there's this hurricane. Mm -hmm. and, and, we're, and I'm watching it with David on the, on, on the computer, and it looked scary. You know, it was like uh, really uh, threatening. But, you know, and this is beautiful because I'm, becoming so much aware now of the metaphysical part of the course where the re it's just all a reflection of my mind. That's it. We are responsible for what we see. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's already a half hour. That went fast. Is that snow behind you? Yeah. Yeah. We have snow. I that's actually, know. that's actually a picture, Frank, but the I real know, snow is outside. Is snowing there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we have a little bit of snow. It's been, it's been, it's been a little bit of snow in the mornings, but I'm sure there's a lot more to come. Um, okay. Yeah, and if uh, if you guys are here, you're going to be tuning in to Jason, and uh, Jason's going to be broadcasting from here, and David coming from Mexico. And after that, Frank will be doing a meditation. So stay tuned for that for to join in a little bit of silence, so we can uh, all stay connected. And as always, thank you so much, everybody, and Frank. And oh, phase me out again. I'll see you guys. Uh, I'll see you guys next week. <laughs>